The story begins with Efon, a manual artist, engrossed in finishing up a new episode and sending it to his editor for production, all while juggling his work as a delivery man on the side. At the Mingxian University excavation site, an eruption occurs, producing two lights. One light enters a trash can, while the other travels to Efon's room. Despite being busy with his new episode and feeling excited about it, a sudden bright light illuminates the room, creating a portal that unexpectedly throws Efon into a different environment. To his astonishment, he realizes that he has undergone a transformation, now clad in some form of armor. This situation brings immense happiness to Efon, as he had always dreamed of being reincarnated into another world as the protagonist. However, this joy is short-lived, as a demon suddenly appears and rushes towards him, knocking him to the ground. Just as the demon is about to attack again, an unknown person intervenes and strikes the demon, although it appears to have little effect. An intense battle ensues between the demon and the mysterious individual. Witnessing this dangerous conflict, Efon contemplates fleeing the scene. During his escape, a fire sword materializes before him, which further enraged the demon. The unknown man is also puzzled by the appearance of the sword. The demon continues its relentless pursuit of Efon, forcing him onto a tree and begins pounding on it. In an unexpected turn of events, Efon falls onto the demon, and the sword drops onto the demon, leading to its termination in a massive explosion. As the scene changes, Efon wakes up the next morning on the street, initially believing it was all just a dream. However, a yellow creature approaches him, making him realize that everything was, in fact, real. Efon takes the creature home and attempts to feed it with cat food, but the creature rejects it and introduces itself as Jerome, a divine beast responsible for protecting the formation. However, Efon remains skeptical and shows Jerome pictures of supposed divine beasts. In response, Jerome dismisses them as fake, insisting on his authenticity. Jerome further explains that the demons have been sealed in a different world, and for millions of years, he has diligently protected the three worlds. He reveals that he was the one who gave Yon the Excalibur sword, which he used that night. Due to a rift opening between the three worlds and the loosening of the seal, more demon winds will emerge, leading to the current situation. It is the reason Efon has been chosen as the one to defeat the demon winds, which fills Efon with excitement. He admires Jerome's ability to articulate his thoughts, commenting, This guy sure knows how to talk. Curious about fixing the seal, Efon asks, but Jerome hesitates to respond. Suddenly, Efon's phone rings, reminding him that he hasn't paid the rent yet and has to leave for work. He puts his phone in his pocket, preparing for work, when an app for the Chosen Ones activates on Efon's phone, registering him as the Night Sword. Later, we encounter another Chosen One named Knightly Marquis, who checks the group chat to find discussions about the Night Sword and how he defeated a three-star Demon Wind. Knightly Marquis becomes frustrated and throws his phone upon realizing that Efon completed the mission that was supposed to be his. As Efon walks through the streets, he suddenly stops, which infuriates Jerome, leading him to vent about being a divine beast and all. Efon then inquires if there are two divine beasts protecting the formation, to which Jerome angrily replies, yes. He points at a person with a similar beast as Jerome's and asks if that person is his mother, noting their resemblance. Jerome dismisses it as mere coincidence, saying it's just a bubble. However, Efon persists with the question, asking if they share the same mother. This angers Jerome, who calls him stupid. We then see the person with the similar beast chatting in the Chosen One chat, inquiring about the new person called Night Sword. Later, as Efon walks through the street, trying to help people, he inadvertently displays his lack of knowledge, which exposes him as the Night Sword to the rest of the Chosen Ones. They lament in the group chat that if he continues in this manner, the world will eventually learn about the Chosen Ones. Consequently, the Chosen One's authorities immediately issue an arrest warrant for Efon. Efon receives a summons from Dub Foreign Affairs, where the officials proceed to list all the rules he had broken on the day he became a Chosen One. However, Efon is confused by the situation. They clarify that all the laws were written in the Chosen One app before installation, but he missed them due to the app being automatically installed on his phone without his consent. One of the officers admits not being aware of this fact, while another suggests that it might be a glitch in the app, which is still not perfect. Ultimately, they decide to let him off with just a warning fee. During the process, one of the officials picks up Efon's registration form, and to their shock, they discover that his spiritual pet is a formation protection divine beast. Efon believes that the officials are impressed with his pet, but much to his surprise, they burst into laughter, unable to fathom why someone would choose a name like Jerome. After settling everything, Jerome hits Efon on the head for revealing his identity. The officials then inform him that he can visit Southern Continent Avenue, a hidden city exclusively for Chosen Ones. The other heroes soon recognize him as the Night Sword. He comes across a big crystal known as the Prophetic Jade, where Chosen Ones test their abilities. The crystal emits shining lights of gold, purple, blue, green, and white, each indicating a different level of strength. The gold light is rare and only the skeleton genie has achieved it. Encouraged to try, Efon jumps towards the jade, but to his disappointment, he splashes against it. The spectators mock him, believing he is weak. 
However, Efon takes out his sword and strikes the stone, causing it to crack, leaving everyone shocked. Director Zane, one of the officials, rushes over and praises Efon for the extraordinary feat. He acknowledges that in all his years of service, he has never seen anyone crack the crystal like that, signifying Efon's strength. While they talk, black smoke enters Efon's sword. Director Zane then assigns Efon the mission to solve the case of a missing ancient sword from the artifact showroom. Jerome is upset with Efon for accepting the task, believing he should focus on killing demon winds in the rift. Efon begins investigating the missing sword, and during this time, an unknown person puts the two pieces of the sword together, creating a rift that reaches Efon's location. A monster crab emerges from the woods, but Efon is not concerned as the crab seems small. However, when a green light enters the crab, it grows larger, making Efon scared. Epon bring out his sword to defend itself but he accidentally cut off one of its claws. The beast starts to retreat, but Efon chases it down. However, due to the black smoke inside the sword, the sword breaks, shocking Efon. The beast takes advantage of this, picking up Efon with its other claw. Just as the beast is about to terminate Efon, Skeleton Genie arrives and swiftly eliminates the beast. Later, we see Jerome ranting about Efon still being alive but the Excalibur sword being broken. It is revealed that Jerome intentionally chose Efon that night and pushed him into the rift because he needed someone to sacrifice in order to fix the broken seal. Jerome also admits to releasing the black smoke into the sword to weaken it and put Efon at a disadvantage. As Efon enters the room, Jerome continues to rant, but Efon doesn't hear what he's saying. Efon expresses his desire to quit the demon hunting business while he is still alive. Jerome mocks him, calling him a coward. Efon states that the only way he will reconsider is if the sword magically gets fixed. To his astonishment, the green light from before enters the sword, magically repairing it. Jerome recognizes the light and informs Efon that whoever fixed the sword must possess unusually powerful abilities. Jerome is pleased that Efon has chosen to continue his demon hunting career. The next day, Hang's butler, Mun, informs him that the new house he paid for is furnished and ready. Hang requests Mun to take him there, and while they are in the vehicle, Hang checks the group chat and discovers people discussing how Skeleton Genie and Night Sword defeated a demon. The people are surprised because Skeleton Genie is known to work alone. As Efon and Jerome look out from the window, they notice Hang's car parking in front of the building. Jerome accidentally spills dirt, and it falls on Hang's face. Efon recognizes Hang as Nightly Marquis when he enters the building. In Hang's apartment, they talk about Efon, with Hang believing that Efon is strong, but his true strength remains unknown. They also mention that the demon winds are becoming stronger. Mung suggests that Hang invite Efon over so he can assess his abilities, but Hang is hesitant believing that anyone who teams up with him must be strong and also have moral value. Suddenly, they hear the doorbell, and Efon and Jerome are at the door. Efon wants to give Hang flowers as a gesture for his new apartment. Jerome wonders why someone as wealthy as Hang would choose to live in a modest building. As Efon enters, the door accidentally locks before Jerome can join. Efon passes through a disinfection room before reaching the main room. Hang is surprised that Efon recognizes him as Knightly Marquis. Efon presses a button, opening a closet and Hang tells him about the properties of all the stones inside. Hang gives Efon a demon wind core stone, stating that it belongs to him since he defeated the goat-headed monster. However, Efon disappears before he could give it to him that night. Efon offers to share the stone with Hang and drags him to Southern Continent Avenue to sell it. People are surprised to see Knightly Marquis with Knight Sword, as he is known to avoid anyone not on his level. The duo enters Ma's commercial house to sell the stone, and they encounter Ma, one of the Dubai officials, who tries to deceive Efon by offering to buy the stone for 300 coins. However, Hang intervenes, and Ma is forced to buy the stone at a price of 1,000 coins. Hang refuses to accept any of the coins, and Efon decides to treat him to a meal. Efon buys Hang a meal as well, but he declines to eat it, finding it unhygienic. Efon ends up eating Hang's food too. When a customer harasses the spiritual beast working in the restaurant, Efon steps in to stop him, and the customer runs away upon seeing Knightly Marquis with him. Later, Hang and Efon return to the outside world, and a rift opens shortly after. They enter to investigate and encounter a four-star demon wind jumping around. Hang informs Efon about the demon wind's attributes as it attacks them with a tornado. Efon throws Jerome at the beast, successfully stopping the tornado attack, but Jerome gets knocked out. Hang advises Efon on some basic sword techniques to use in fighting the demon wind, but Efon admits he doesn't know any of them, prompting Hang's surprise. Efon decides to attack the demon head-on, and Hang joins him. The demon escapes underground, and Hang warns Efon to be cautious, as it can attack from anywhere. Efon tries to catch Hang after a massive shockwave pushes him away, but he only manages to catch the tip of Hang's cloth, which rips off. The demon wind then targets Efon, but he skillfully dodges its attack and knocks it to the floor. Efon boasts to Hang about his strength, even mentioning making Hang his right hand man, which angers Hang. Hang demonstrates his power by activating one of his hidden techniques to attack the demon wind repeatedly, eventually defeating it. 
When the rift clears, Efon takes back what he said about Hang, but he still proposes that they become teammates. Later, Efon is seen practicing different sword moves when he receives a call from his editor asking him to rewrite the last episode due to poor performance. In the group chat, the Chosen Ones discuss Hang's recent mission with Ifen, surprised that Hang teamed up with him. Hang has several teammate requests that he ignores and comes across an article where Ifen portrays himself as the hero of the mission while depicting Hang as his assistant. That night, Efon receives a call from his editor, who informs him that his home page has received a lot of engagements because of the last episode. Efon checks it and feels delighted. The editor advises him to write a better story to keep the audience engaged. Moreover, the editor wants a new character with an alpha aura. Efon's mind immediately goes to Skeleton Genie, and he plans to develop the new character around him. At the Wangi Entertainment Building, an actress named Chinmo watches the new episode featuring Skeleton Genie. Later that day, Efon is on a delivery mission when he hears a lady screaming for help. He stops his bike and rushes to an alley where he sees a crook attacking a young lady. Efon intervenes and tells the crook to stop. The crook, however, looks to the side to check who is talking, and in that brief moment, Efon lands a kick on him, causing the crook to pass out immediately. But to Efon's surprise, he then realizes that the girl and the crook were actually part of a movie set. Efon is hit with a compensation fee, which looks quite substantial. It turns out that the actress is Chinmo herself. They sit down to relax, and Chinmo sends a message to the delivery man bringing her food. Efon's phone rings as the message comes in, and both Efon and Chinmo look at each other. Efon, who is disguised as the delivery man, realizes that Chinmo is the person he is looking for. Efon, on the other hand, looks around and finds that the food carton has fallen to the ground. To his utmost surprise, Chinmo picks it up and starts eating the contents inside. Suddenly, a rift begins to open, and Ifen thinks it's an opportunity for him to fight more monsters so he can have more stories to write and entertain the people. Efon bravely enters the rift and confronts a formidable five-star demon wind. Despite his efforts to slash the beast, the demon easily overpowers Efon's sword and throws him aside. Undeterred, Efon gets back on his feet to attack again, but the beast catches him in a brick lock, immobilizing him. Meanwhile, Jerome is thrilled that Efon has encountered someone who might finally eliminate him and fix the seal. The beast is on the verge of defeating Efon when Skeleton Genie arrives and launches a fierce attack on the demon. Skeleton Genie relentlessly strikes the beast, and unbeknownst to them, a fan records the entire battle from behind some bushes. Jerome, however, is displeased, as Skeleton Genie's intervention foils his plans once again. Efon manages to break free from the lock and tries to help Skeleton Genie, but his sword misbehaves due to the green light's influence. The sword pulls Efon towards Skeleton Genie, causing an unintended collision that disrupts her attack sequence. Consequently, Skeleton Genie is forced to restrain Efon to prevent further interference. She initiates a powerful attack that engulfs the beast in an explosion, seemingly defeating it. However, they cannot find the core stone of the demon wind. As the rift clears, everyone returns to their normal appearances. Surprised to discover that Chin is actually Skeleton Genie, Efon proposes that she becomes his teammate, but she declines. Efon seeks Hong's advice on how to approach Chin, as he believes Hong knows how to handle such situations with girls. Following Hong's guidance, Ifen conducts online research as well. Later, during an interview, Efon arrives with flowers for Chin. Unfortunately, he is promptly escorted out by the guard before even spending a minute with her. Observing a girl on a motorcycle who bears a resemblance to Chin, Ifen decides to follow her and discovers that she visits an orphanage. He sees her playing football and attempting to sing, even though her voice is not the best. It becomes evident that Chin has been helping orphan children, revealing her caring nature. Efon approaches Chin and asks her to be his left wing guard. While they are discussing this, a girl runs over to inform Chin that one of the kids has fallen down. Chin rushes to the child's aid, and Efon follows suit, assisting Chin in taking the child to the hospital for medical care. Efon also helps Chin fix the railing where the child fell. After their errand, Chin gets on her motorcycle to leave, but Efon is determined and decides to follow her on his bicycle. Shin suddenly stops in the middle of the road, and Efon, believing she might be reconsidering, is caught off guard when his bicycle brakes fail, causing him to crash into her motorcycle. Moments later, medical officers arrive to take Yin, the boy with intentions of dealing with Efon, to a psychiatric hospital to ensure Chin's safety for a few days. Later, it is revealed that the fan taking pictures of Skeleton Genie intends to sell them to a boy who harbors a grudge against Efon. Furthermore, Efon receives several calls informing him of unpaid fines, compensation for disrupting a film shoot, and the responsibility to repair Chin's bike. Despite these troubles, Efon remains optimistic due to the recent success of his channel. However, his optimism is short-lived as he is accused of plagiarism, leading to his posts being taken down, and his rent is also due, with the threat of eviction from his landlord. Amidst these challenges, a rift opens, and Efon faces a tough decision of going home or facing the demon wind that emerges. Efon's heroic instincts kick in, and he decides to confront the demon wind. 
he finds himself facing the same five-star demon as before, which they previously failed to defeat because its core was not destroyed. Efon encounters another chosen one, Tiger Head, and together, they fight the powerful demon. Efon uses powerful sword techniques, but the demon's regeneration ability proves challenging to overcome. It turns out that the monster's true body is an illusion and can only be defeated when its true form is vanquished. Chin and Hong receive a notification about Efon's battle with the demon wind and rush to his aid. Tiger Head appears to be at the mercy of the demon wind, and Ifan is devastated by the thought of failing to protect others. However, he breaks free from the demon's hold and launches a powerful attack using flames. The demon is ultimately defeated, and its core stone is recovered. Tiger Head is revealed to have survived the encounter. Efon rushes home to find that he has not been evicted, and his landlord informs him that someone has paid his rent. Additionally, his editor calls to inform him that the plagiarism accusation has been dropped and the editor is looking forward to a new chapter from him. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe our channel, Any Explainer.